Needle Felting a Dragon, stage four. Getting the talons right this time. Hey, it's Pam from Ben McFuzzy Lugs, back again with another Thursday's needle felting tutorial. This is the fourth one in our series of needle felting the dragon. So if you haven't been following along, I'll pop links to the playlist below and up here somewhere. Let's hope we've got the right side this time. And in today's video, I'm just showing you how I've needle felted the talons using a couple of products. Paver Pole, the fabric stiffener, which I have a video for that I just made yesterday. I did a review on this product. And also I have varnished it with Pin Flare Craft Glaze. And if you stay along right till the end, I've got an exciting opportunity if you're a needle felter. So let's get started with this tutorial. So first we're going to wrap the feet and the toes. And I'm just using this by, I'm just doing this by using a small amount of fleece, wrapping it round the foot and then a couple of wraps on the toe, quickly felting it in position. And for each toe, an extra tiny strip of fleece, wrap it once round the foot and then up the toe back down and back round the foot again and again this is just tacking it on with a needle felting I'm not needle felting it yet I'm just holding it in position so I can get on to the next toe and so this dragon has the three toes on the front and the one on the back like I said before you can do as many many or few toes as you like uh, three on the front and one on the back seems quite quite well enough balanced Obviously both feet need doing, so let's have a look at this other foot. So obviously the bulk of the foot's going to have more fleece on it, so wrapping around the bulk of the foot, up the toe, felt it on. And then you want to spend a good bit of time felting that foot to get it solid. And what we're doing here, we're going to work on your talons. So splitting wool, and I'm just going to roll a small amount of fleece into a tube and I'm felting down the side that's going to be the closest to the toe I'm felting down into the the length of the tube that I've made to make a rounded top and the bottom of the talon I want it more pointed it's like a kind of rounded teardrop shape and as you can see with my fingers I'm squishing into it and making a point and slightly curved down the way with almost a, a rounded ball at the top I'm making sure the point of this talon, the bottom end, is as firmly felted as I possibly can make it. And then the top, not quite so much, because the top has to attach to the toes. But just, I spent a good 10-15 minutes felting this, making sure it's really firm. Because some of the experiments I'd done with the fabric hardener, I found it easiest to manipulate if... I'd got it as firm as I possibly could already with needle felting. I'm afraid there's no shortcut with a fabric hardener. You can't just skip the skip the felting stage. We have to really felt it pretty fine. And then I'm going to make enough talons for each toe of the dragon. So in this case, it's going to be eight talons, varying sizes, but all still pretty similar. And then to attach them, to the toe I just hold the rounded end over the toe now this is is as fiddly to do as it is to film you just hold it pinching it between your fingers and felting up into the toe and felting from the toe into the talon and making sure where it's curved the the pointy bit is pointing down a little and I say honestly this is quite fiddly just squishing between my fingers doing the best I can to hold it in place and there we go that's the talons getting stuck on as you can see it takes a little bit of time to get them all in place but so far so good and then spend a good bit of time felting all over you can see the difference this is an extra half an hour and I've felted them pretty solidly onto the toes and to make this next step easier I've just pointed them all down a little bit and separated them from each other and I'm dipping them into the pava pole the fabric hardener if you haven't seen already I've got a video review of this um, to see why I kind of decided to use it for the toes much happier with how this worked out but the easiest way I found to use it is what I'm doing just now is just actually dipping it into the fluid and wiping the excess off on the side and then just I'm ever so gently 
trying to stroke down some of the flyaways. But the more you touch this, the more the loose hairs kind of seem to stick to your fingers. So just take your time with it. And then I just balanced them upside down with these paws in the air for a couple of hours for this to harden up. And then by a happy accident, when I came back a couple of hours later, I found it was actually dry to the touch, but still soft enough that I could manipulate it. Because you can see the surface is really quite rough just now. So just squeezing between my fingers, I'm making it into a better talon shape. And I'm also able to just gently run my fingers down it and just make it a little bit smoother. Smoother than I could have felt it and much smoother than with the pav of pole if you just leave it as it is. So just keep coming back and checking. This was about two hours but obviously it depends how much fluid you've got on and the temperature of your house and everything. But it was really nice and easy to manipulate at this point so that was a lucky accident. And there I'm just smoothing out some of the lumps. And that I just left it again. I think I left that overnight just to really harden up. And I discovered experimenting on wee talons that I'd made separately from this just to get an idea. And it's always good to practice off your piece when you're using stuff you're not used to. I found the painting on the talons was much better if I first glossed it with a pin flare sealing gloss. First of all, it was easier to paint on and the it just looked better. So I'm just going over and giving it a coat of this gloss. And then I left that to dry. And these are just acrylic paints. They're just cheap ones I got out of a kiddie store. They're not posh paints at all. And all I'm wanting to do is just give a little bit of colour to the talons. Because they're never plain white. The, the dragon probably does some pretty gross work with these talons. And I'm just taking up a tiniest bit of yellow paint. And from the top of the talon, remember you're going to have a toe here as well. So if you make a mistake at the top, it's not a big deal. It's going to be covered. But I'm just dabbing it down from the top. So that's where most of the pigment will be. And dragging down so we get a blended out kind of gradient from deeper yellow at the top. Blending down through lighter shades of yellow. And then it will, the white shows through at the bottom. So it's... The talon's dirtier at the top and not so not so bad at the bottom. And remembering to get all sides. So coating the bottom just in the exact same way. Putting more, more colour on at the bottom and then dragging it down. And then I'm diving in with a wee bit of brown just to do the same but more concentrated very much on the top. We just want the very top of his, his talon to be just a little bit grungy and gross looking. Because it kind of would be. They're not going to be all beautifully white and pristine and I'm just going over with a dry brush as well um, sometimes to try and blend out extra and sometimes just to add in a little bit more colour where I feel I need it and then once I'm happy with that it's starting to look pretty good I'm just going to seal it all in with a bit more of this pin flare gloss and it gives a really nice effect, almost like they're a little bit wet, but because you've got the gloss on top as well, there's just a little tip, if you can just see there, there's a little tip to the talon that's completely see-through. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Now, I said about this great opportunity. I'd like to just give back a little bit to the needle felting community because I've learned so much from you guys over the years and everyone's been so supportive and lovely. So, I would love to feature a needle felter at the end of each of my videos. So if you're a needle felter, if you just want to comment below or drop me a message or something, and all I want from you, you can, if you have a YouTube channel or you're confident in front of the camera, just send me a little clip of you introducing yourself and showing me some of your work. Or if you're not, if you're not wanting to be on camera, that's perfectly fine. If you just send me some nice images of your work and a little intro about yourself and I'll pop that up here. And I have a link to your social media or your website or your shops or anything like that. 
I'm happy to give you a wee plug. So if you just want to give a wee comment, if you want to be involved in, in my end screen and check back every week to hopefully we'll get introduced to some lovely new needle felters because it's a fantastic craft and everyone is so talented and I'm always amazed by the different things people can create out of wool. Okay, thank you.